Ladies and gentlemen, boys and envies, welcome back once again to the DMZ, and I thought today I would do a breakdown of viable gun builds across multiple different playstyles and maps of all the 15 minute cooldown guns in the game. That's right, I'm putting every single one in one video. I'm going to give you a couple of builds, PvP builds, builds for doing missions, builds for regains. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I post almost every day. And on that note, let's get into it. All right. So first up, I did want to start with Old Faithful, and that is the M4. With the M4, we're going to use the FSS Covert V Suppressor because it's not going to give us a huge ADS penalty, but it is going to give us a little bit of range and a bit of velocity. We're then going to add the Phase 3 Grip for stability and a little bit of recoil control. This thing is incredible. We're going to add the high velocity ammunition to max out our velocity for the cost of almost zero range we're then going to add the 60 round mags it's the largest we have then i use the choreo rex pro optic you can use the optic of your choice i just really love this optic the m4 is a banger this is the gun that i actually used the most last year and i still use it a lot though the m13 is my favorite but this has a 15 minute cooldown and the m13b does not and then i'm going to give you my building 21 ashika island and just extremely aggressive pvp build that i run behind a sniper on Almazra even build for the M4 and that's going to start off the FTAC castle comp to remove our recoil almost entirely then we're going to add the Ole V laser to get that stability so we can challenge fights to about 60 meters plus the aim down sight and the sprint to fire we're then going to add the hollow point ammunition so people cannot run away from us and they get that crippling effect that's almost like a flinch when it hits 60 round mag once again because it's the largest that we have then finish off with a phantom grip because this thing is absurd for sprint to fire and aim down site this is a wonderful build if you absolutely have to have an optic i would sacrifice the phantom grip to throw it on but I, I don't think you need it the irons are good you could also try taking the hollow point off but again then they can get away from you this build is just perfect the way it is the irons are worth getting used to on this gun now while we're talking about the old faithful guns let's talk about the tac 56 and here we have the tac 56 and it's long range regain how you're going to use it across all of the maps except for building 21 and it may be a sheikah but it, it can get by there too. This build, once again, it's the FSS Covert V Suppressor for that main benefit of range and velocity for a small cost of aim down sight speed. Then I'm going to add the Agent Grip because we don't need recoil control. However, we do want the stability from it, and we're also going to get hip fire out of this, which is extremely clutch for fighting your way through bots in a pinch. 60 round mag because it's the largest we can get here. And then we I use the Aim Op V4 on this gun because it's the one I like on this gun. Again, use whatever you would like in that position. This gun is mid honestly it's mid but it gets the job done and i like running it because it's easy and then the build that i would run this on a sheikah vondel and the few times i've taken it in building 21 is this one here with the echo line gsx which we do lose a bit of range on but that is it and we get the suppression i then use the 12 inch barrel again we lose a little bit of range but we gain ads and sprint to fire the 60 round mag because it's the largest we have the demo clean shot grip for the ads sprint to fire same for the tv x line pro stock this gun has no recoil and with this build it really doesn't have any still you're not going to be taking fights past 35 meters with this build you're absolutely going to slap people in that mid-range you're going to be able to hold your own up close against submachine guns. Sticking with Old Faithfuls, I only have one build that I like to use with the ISO Hemlock, and that is my 300 Black build. I love this gun for places like Koji Complex and Building 21 because it absolutely slaps. This thing is a faster TTK than the Chimera, believe it or not. For this build, we're going to use the Komodo Heavy, so it has zero horizontal recoil. I know the Hemlock doesn't really have a whole lot of recoil. The 300 Black does add a little bit of horizontal. This nulls that out. We're going to have the Ole V Laser, so we get the stability, spread to fire, and aim to sit down sight. We're going to add the hollow point so people cannot get away. This also gives us a 300 black conversion. Then we're going to add the 45 round magazine because it's the largest we have. And then that beautiful phantom grip for max sprint to fire and aim down sight speed. This gun is a monster in 300 black. I know it's a marshmallow shooter in 5.56, but 300 black absolutely slaps. Next up, we've got the Castov 762, and this is my main regain build. I typically go in with a throwing knife and look for a Castov or an M4, almost always finding the Castov first. For this build, we're going to use the Husher 65 for the same reason that we use the Covert V on the 556 guns. It's the same stats, just on a larger caliber gun. We're then going to add the 406 millimeter barrel to get ourselves a little bit of range, velocity, and recoil control. The Edge 47 foregrip for stability and 4% recoil control. High velocity, so we can get that max range 
range of about 85 to 90 meters with the iron sights and absolutely slap our targets. Then the 40 round mag is the largest that we have, so it's what we go with. The cast off 762, I have won so many gunfights with it. I've wiped so many platoons, one versus six. This thing is insane. Learn the recoil pattern if you haven't already, especially with this build, because every single person I've ever given this build to has said it's the best AR they've ever used in the game. And then sticking with the cast off 762, this is my heavy PvP build for this, and I use this again, building 21 all the way up to Almazra. This one right here, I gave to one of my teammates as contraband, and he used it for two months straight. The same one, did not lose it. We killed over 1,000 people together with the guns. For this build, you're gonna use the eight point flash hider, get that recoil control, but not sacrifice as much aimed on sight as using one of the bigger options. I'm gonna use the 406 millimeter barrel again for the same reasons as before. I'm gonna use the agent grip for a little bit of hip fire and to get the stability because our recoil is under control. We're then gonna throw on the high velocity ammo in the 40 round mag so we can challenge fights at a longer range to wrap up this build. I'm telling you the cast off 762 hits like a dump truck and this build here will make people go he's hacking. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think. And now we need to talk about the TR-76 Geist which was the last AR added before DMZ was sent to the wayside. They took it out back and put it down. This is my main build that I'll run behind a sniper on Almazra or I will take to Vondel. For this we're going to use the Freight 40 integrally suppressed barrel then we're going to add the VLK 7 milliwatt laser. These two together suppress our gun, give stability, give recoil control. It zeroes out the aim down sight penalty of the barrel and the sprint to fire. I then add the Corio REX Pro optic because again this is my favorite optic. Use the one that you like. Then I use high velocity ammo in the 45 round mag because it's the largest we have. This thing easily can take fights to 100 meters without problems. I know the Geist has a lot of recoil but running this build will make it absolutely slap and it has a huge huge advantage on most people's long barrel builds and just like the other guns i had up here this is the pvp build for the tr76 geist and this is for building 21 ashika vondel and you can run it on maz if you're going to get up close and personal you can even take it in nikoshi for this we're going to use the ty lr8 this is just like the komodo heavy it's just a different name for a larger caliber we use the vlk 7 mm laser for the stability and the aim down sight speed so we can make this thing real fast we're going to add the fss hard top comb the same reasons we're going to use the 45 round mag and the hollow point ammo so people cannot get away from us and they get that faux flinch effect from the crippling damage this thing is awesome i loved this gun during season six and i really wish the game had continued on because this thing slaps in warzone still another gun i've only got one build for is the m16 and that's just because the m16 is the fastest ttk has the fastest ttk at long range of all the ars but it is a very high skill gun i love using the m16 but i do not suppress it because it's just not worth it so we're going to start with the komodo heavy to take out any horizontal recoil and make this thing a laser beam i use the amop v4 on this you can use whatever optic you would like the edge 47 gives us four percent recoil in both directions as well as aim stability which is key then we add the high velocity ammo so the rounds get there on time and the 60 round mag so we can burr all day long this gun actually hits like a truck if you have the talent to use it you will kill snipers before they can even get a beat on you another gun that has a bit of a skill gap due to its magazine size is the stv 556 but it has an incredible ttk this is another gun that i do like to use on regains if i find one on vondel while doing a regain i'll typically kit it out however you can build it from the 15 minute as well the FSS Covert V Suppressor is a clutch attachment. I love this thing. I actually use the SC SR07 on this because it removes visual recoil, even though it's a hidden stat. Then add the high velocity ammo in the 42 round mag. This is the largest mag we have. Then I throw the Bruin TS30 comb on to make this thing move and groove. The STB 556 is another mid gun, but it will absolutely clap one or two people in a pinch. Don't rely on it, but if you find one, don't be afraid of it. And again, if you have the bundle this came in don't be afraid to use it because it is a good gun most of the time all right guys i decided i would give you a 556 build for the hemlock because people are always asking me for one here it is i'm going to start with the optic i use the df 105 reflex sight on this gun i don't know why i only use it on this gun but i like it on this gun use whatever you would like to use fss covert v as always of course the aging grip so we get that aim idle stability as well as that hip fire because we do not need recoil control because the hemlock doesn't have any recoil we then add the high velocity ammo so the bullets get there on time of course the 45 round mag because it's the largest this gun has and then there's the gun that i would take over the 556 hemlock every day of the week and that is the cast off 545 this thing 
It's like a dump truck, and it has been the red-headed stepchild of Modern Warfare 2, DMZ, and that whole year of Warzone, even though it absolutely destroys in the mid-range, holds its own up close, and can handle the long range in a pinch. For this build, once again, FSS Covert V Suppressor, but then we're going to use the Commando Foregrip because we only need a slight amount of recoil control. We mainly want the aim stability from this. I use the aim up V4, use the object of your choice, I use the 45 round mag, however, if you want the 60s, just remember you're going to run a little slower. And then throw the Demo X2 rear grip on so you can get some ADS and sprint to fire out of it. You can go to the laser, the 7 milliwatt laser if you would like. I just like running this gun without a visible laser because this is when I'm being lazy, baby. And then the cast off 545, go into a Sheikah, go into building 21. This thing will absolutely slap people in both locations. Once again, starting with the Komodo Heavy, so we have zero horizontal recoil. And we can take as much aim down and sprint time out of this gun as possible. I then throw the Ole V laser on, so I get aim stability, aim down sight, and sprint to fire. Throw the Pro Light TL3 stock, so I can get the same stats once again. The 45 round mag, use the 60 if you want it, you'll move slower. And then hollow points, so they can't get away, and they get that faux effect when the bullets hit of crippling power. Another fantastic gun for regains, but there's also a 15 minute version of this gun, and that is the Cast Off 74U. This thing is incredible. This build will slap everything. If you don't need an optic, you can take the optic off and run a stock or a rear grip for ADS speed. That's typically how I run it. However, this is how I think you should run it until you get really, really good with this gun. Of course, we're going to start with the FSS Covert V Suppressor, as always. However, we're going to add the short tack 190 millimeter barrel so we can get a little bit of our recoil control and aim down out of it. It's one of the few guns that has those stats in a barrel. We use the Phase 3 grip just like the M4, get 3% recoil control as well as aim stability, and the 45 round mag is the largest option we have. Another option you can do if you don't want an optic and you're going to a place like building 21 is slap hollow point into the magazine instead of running the optic now let's talk about what i believe to be the best sniper support gun in the game in the fr advancer which everyone bought this ghost bundle so i think everybody has this one of course fss covert v as always edge 47 so we get that recoil control that we need as well as stability high velocity so we can get it banging 60 round mag largest we have and i run the chrono mini pro don't be afraid to run the optic of your choice just remember this gun has almost no recoil it only has visual recoil so pull down about 20 percent of what you think you should all right now i saved these two to show them to you together because these are builds that i take into building 21 a lot because they absolutely slap they have no recoil and you fly around the map both of them are stockless builds one's russian one's american let's get into them the cast off 74u with the komodo heavy to take all of our horizontal recoil out then i throw the pineapple on so i can get the recoil coil control and I can get the hip fire. I use the BR-209 barrel so I can make it faster, take the stock off to make it faster, and then I had the 45 round mag because it's the largest the gun has. You will fry even broadsides with this gun. It is amazing. You can find them everywhere on Almaz, plus there's a 15 minute cooldown version of it. It's the best gun for building 21 except for the m13c because the m13c will absolutely beat out the 74u plus we can suppress this one so for the m13c again we're going to go stockless but first we're going to start with the echo line gsx suppressor to keep our gun suppressed and keep sneaky beaky they're going to add the lock grip precision 40 for the recoil control the 60 round mag because it's the largest we have the vlk 7 milliwatt laser because we get a bit of stability can actually shoot from one side of building 21 all the way to the other and kill people as well as the aim down sight sprint to fire then we collapse the stock on the rear to make this thing stockless and we can run way faster than anyone else this gun is a demon both of them are i promise you give them a shot especially if you run them in pairs or trios you will decimate everyone then there is my pvp build for the fr advancer which once again echo line gsx then we use the 395 millimeter fr mini board barrel this thing is to speed the gun up and just give it all of those good stats the ole v for stability, ADS, and sprint to fire. We throw on the Cation grip so we can get the same stats once again, and then the 60 round mag because it's the largest we have. This is a great PvP option. If you don't mind going loud, you can take off that Echo line and you can put the Komodo on it, and it will absolutely slap to 70 meters either way. All right, next up, let's talk about battle rifles and the Cronin Squall. The Cronin Squall did get a couple of nerfs throughout the year, but it is absolutely still a top tier meta within the DMZ, and this build here is 
it's really good behind a sniper. It's good for Almazra. It's good for Vondel. I would even use it on a Sheikah, but I wouldn't go any lower than that. Uh, for this build, Husher 65 for the same reason as the Covert V on other guns. Edge 47, as always, for the maximum recoil control without getting diminishing returns. I'm going to use the high velocity ammo to make sure our bullets get there on time. With the 50 round drum, because it's the largest option we have. I use the Cor Corio REX Pro because it is my favorite optic for this gun. However, I'm also going to give you a sneaky billy build for this gun because this build right here absolutely fries broadsides, Lockman subs, any gun in the game up close, and it's a battle rifle, so you can still keep that mid range. This thing destroys Building 21, it destroys a Sheikah, and it works good behind a sniper if you don't mind being unsuppressed. We're going to use the TY LR8 just like we use the Komodo Heavy on the smaller caliber guns to take all of our horizontal recoil away. The Ole V laser for the aim down sight, sprint to fire, and stability. Use the FJX Z Pad 9 to get more of those stats. Then I'm going to use the composite ammo, which is going to cost us some velocity and make this feel kind of like a 300 black rifle like the Chimera or the M13C. But we're going to take a ton of weight out of the gun and we're going to move like we have an SMG. We're then going to throw on the 50 round drum because it's the largest we can get. You can kill an entire team, an entire platoon with this without reloading. And they're going to think you're hacking because there's no way one person just did that. I love the Cronin Squall and the composite rounds, especially. Nobody, I've never seen anyone use them at least. I'll say that much. Try this out because you will be very, very surprised. Another gun that is absolutely at the top tier meta that no one is using and has a 15 minute cooldown is the EBR. The EBR is absolutely a sniper contender because it only takes four shots with a headshot or three shots with two. This thing is a monster. With this build, you have almost zero recoil and you can kill people out to 400 meters. I'm gonna start with the Polar Fire S suppressor for maximum velocity and add the high velocity ammo for the same reason. We're then gonna use the 20 round mag because it's the largest we have. We add the FTAC Locus SP as our scope because this is my personal favorite. You can use the SPX if you want. I just like the reticle in this one more. They have the same zoom. And we're gonna use the SO90 factory stock. You get max stability and all of the recoil control that we could ever want. This thing absolutely rips. And then like I said, I'm gonna give you another dirty build. This is my building 21 build for the EBR. I typically run this alongside a broadside and a Lockman sub with my teammates, and we absolutely decimate the lobby every time. This thing is stupid good. Three shot kills every time, and it's loud, it's proud, but you will clear a lobby in no time. We're going to start off with a 16-inch chrome-lined barrel. We're then going to add the Ole V laser so we can get our speed up, the SC SR07 to remove as much of that visual recoil as we can, and run a different optic if you want. I just prefer this one. 20-round mag because it's the largest we have, the hollow point ammo, so no Nobody can run away. This thing is so good. I know I sound crazy. Give it a shot if you've got the skill to use a semi-automatic rifle because you will not be let down. All right, so we're moving into SMGs. And first up, let's start with the FSS Hurricane. The Hurricane is another gun that's slept on. This thing is mid-meta, I'd say. I'd say it's A tier. It's not S tier, it's A tier. But it's a very good sniper support option. And that's what I use it for. This build has the Lacerda Compensator on it because I'm loud with it. I don't care. This takes all of the horizontal recoil a lot of this 5.7 because 5.7 does have a lot of horizontal recoil in this game. Then add the Ole V laser to get the stability to reach that mid range as well as the ADS and sprint to fire. We add the Quicksilver collapse stock because we're trying to run up on people as fast as we can. It's another gun that's good for building 21. Just throwing that in there. We use the Lock Grip Precision 40 as our foregrip to counteract that collapse stock and get the recoil control back. And we finish off with that Phantom Grip so we can have as much movement speed, aim down and sprint as possible. This is a heavy pvp build and it will get the job done however if you're looking for a more traditional sniper support build for the hurricane here it is right here we're gonna use the x10 rr40 to get maximum bullet velocity out of it then we're gonna throw frangible in it because with frangible you do not get health regain for 20 seconds instead of eight frangible is so op in certain situations especially on maps like ashika and almazra we're gonna use the ole v laser so we can challenge in the mid range also get the ads and sprint to fire from it the quick silver stock for the same reasons minus the stability that doesn't give us that then we're gonna have the sack and zx grip to get our recoil control this thing 
zooms and it fries. The Hurricane is one of the guns I use a lot. Give it a shot, you won't be let down. A gun that is absolute top tier meta is the ISO 45. The only thing that holds it back is that it has a 45 round mag as its largest magazine, but that's okay. You can absolutely fry two people before reloading. Little finesse while you reload and you're done. Batter a throwing knife. For this build, I use a six inch ax blade barrel because I want the suppression, the recoil control, and the bullet velocity from it. But then I'm gonna add the VLK 7 milliwatt laser for the stability, aim down, and sprint to fire as always. We can challenge that mid-range. The SK3 Cheetah stock so we can get our speed up without giving away too much recoil. Then we're gonna throw the EXP shear rear grip on so we have maximum sprint to fire ADS and can still control this gun. The ISO 45, like I said, is an S tier gun. This thing absolutely shreds. If you're doing a regain, I would take this for Vondel or even a Sheikah if you're going for the PVP. I would not run this as sniper support, however, I would definitely run an AR in front of it or just run it by itself. However, there is a sniper support build for the ISO 45, and that's the X10 RR40 suppressor to maximize velocity and range, then the nine inch PTX trainer barrel for the same reasons, plus recoil control, and the Cronin Mini Pro so you can see in those mid-range engagements, the Edge 47 for stability and a bit of recoil, and then finish off that 45 round drum because it's the largest option we have. Typically at 50 meters, it takes a full drum with only missing five shots to kill somebody. It's not very hard to do. This is a good option for sniper support if you're running a fast class on something like a Sheikah, but run an SPX or an MCPR in front of it. And well, the Lockman Shroud has a 15 minute cooldown, so it's in the list. The Lockman Shroud, I absolutely hate it. It has a decent TTK, I will give it that. I just don't like like the burst feel on an SMG. Like the M16, hate the shroud. But the best build for this gun is the 170 millimeter grapple six barrel. Then we're gonna use the seven milliwatt laser as always, that's the VLK laser. We're gonna use the mobile stock to get our speed up. And then we're gonna add the Lockman TCG-10 rear grip to get a bit of recoil control. I use the 40 round mag. I don't see a point for the 50. It takes so long to empty a 40 anyway. But if you want the 50, Toss the 50 on, just know you'll be a little slower. Another S tier gun that I've got in here and has a 15 minute cooldown is the MP7 or the Vel 46 as it's called in game. Once again, X10 RR40 suppressor for maximum range. We pair that with the LM Series 7 barrel to bring some of that ADS speed loss back. We then use the VLK 7 milliwatt laser to get stability, aim down sight, and sprint to fire to make this thing absolutely fly. We then use the demo RXT stock to further move our ADS sprint to fire and movement speeds up. And then I use the 60 or the 50, depending on my mood. I put the 60 on because, well, it looks better for a video. If you want the 50, use the 50. You can use the 40, but you've got to be very good to do that. And if you're going to do that, the only thing you can really gain is a foregrip. And if I was going to do that, I would use the Schlager Tango, or you could use a Cronin Mini Pro if you don't like the irons. This guy has the best irons in the game. And then I got a heavy PvP build for places like Building 21 and Ashika. This is another stockless gun that has zero recoil. We're going to start with the Lacerda Compensator to take all of that horizontal out of the gun, and I mean all of the horizontal. But they're going to add the Lock Grip Precision 90, sorry, the Lock Grip Precision 40, I don't know where I'm at, to further bring that recoil back under control from putting on the Vel A568 Collapse Stock so we can absolutely fly around the map, throw a hollow point in our 50 round mag so when we shoot people they cannot get away. I really like using this because you run extremely fast. I'm a big fan of stockless guns if you can't tell. Give this one a try too, you might like it. Now let's talk about the cream de la cream of submachine guns in the Lockman sub. There's a little trick on this Lockman sub, and I promise you I'm not kidding when I say this, but let's start at the beginning. We use the X10 RR40 suppressor so we can get that range up and that velocity up, as always. We use the Falcon barrel so we can get some of those stats up that we want. Then we're throwing the FT mobile stock, not only for movement speed, aim down sight, all of that, but it also adds 20% to our damage range. And it is a bug stat that has been in the game since season two. No one knows it exists. The Lockman TCG-10 rear grip so we can get a little bit of recoil control so this thing has zero recoil. Then I use the 40 round mag. Once again, use the 50 if you want to. You're just going to run slower. That's it. And since there's quite literally no way to make that gun better, let's move on and talk about the Vaznev. The Vaznev is another gun that's heavily slept on and it is very, very good. Everyone bought the Rose Bundle, so I'm assuming you have it. Throw on the X10R40 as well as the SA Response 3 barrel to push out your damage range and get that velocity up because this gun is very good in the mid range. It's a very good sniper support option. Use the Atriat stock. I can't say that word, so I'm just going to butcher it. Get your movement up to get some aim down up and then throw the 45 round mag on 
on it with a true tack grip once again max mag and to get some more aim down sight and sprint to fire speed like i said this is a great gun you can find them on the ground all over al Mazra. remember that if you're on a regain and you need a second gun however now it's time to talk about my favorite of the submachine guns and that is the bass p this is my main submachine gun right here we're gonna use the 10 and a half inch bruin typhon barrel to suppress ourselves get some recoil and bullet velocity out of it vlk 7 milliwatt laser so we can stabilize our gun for that mid-range fight aim down sight sprint to fire all that good stuff use the bruin flash v4 stock for that movement speed aim down sight sprint to fire once again all the good stuff the d37 rear grip to get recoil control to balance out what we just did with the flash stock and finish off with the 50 round drum it's the largest that we have the bass p is definitely one of the best submachine guns in this game i know i've said a lot are good but i'm telling you you can compete with the lockman sub the broadside even that composite round of cronin squall i mentioned earlier the Bass P is an absolute demon. And don't worry, I included my PvP build for this as well. This is the SMG that I have the most kills with, and this is the build that I've done it with. We've made slight changes from the last build. We took off the interlace suppressed barrel, added the FTAC Castle Comp for recoil control, used the VLK 7 milliwatt laser. We then at hollow point our 50 round drums so people can't get away from us, and we keep the blue and flash stop. This thing is awesome. This gun has almost no recoil, and you can take fights to 50 meters all day with you. You will absolutely decimate lobbies with this. It is so much fun. And then back to the Vaznev for just a second. I got one more stockless build for you. I think this is the last one. Again, a zero recoil build. This thing is great. And you can build these up very quickly from Almazra if you want to do a building 21 day. They're very easy to come by. For this, we're going to use the Lacerda Compensator. Zero horizontal recoil after that's applied. Go on the Schlager Tango to take out the little bit of vertical recoil that we gained from the VLK stockless. Of course, we're going to add the stockless so that we can move. Then we're going to use the 45 round mag because it's the largest we have and fill it with hollow point so people cannot get away from us. This thing is super good and it's super easy to find. Plus, you may have that 15 minute cooldown. All right, now it's time to talk shotguns. So with the shotguns, there's really only one good build for them. You can change an attachment here or there. First, let's talk with the Bryson 800. The Bryson Improved Choke is the best muzzle for this gun. Suppressors absolutely ruin your range. So stick with a choke because a choke will bring your shots together because a choke will bring your pellets together. And this one also gives the range. It is so good. This thing is a one tap to, I believe, nine meters and a two tap to 17. We're gonna use the 29 and a half inch barrel to get that maximum range, but we do only get six shots. If you want the 10 shots, go ahead and take it. I believe it's eight shots, actually. Either way, if you want more shots, you can go with that barrel. Just know you're not gonna have quite as much range. I use the stockless pistol grip because I think it looks better. You can use the sawed off if you prefer that. They do the same thing. I use the X50 tactical pump so I can rechamber as fast as possible. And then I use dragon's breath rounds because we all know why. This thing's really good and it's really fun. This is a high stakes gun because you can one pump somebody within, I think, six meters. It, it, it's fun. It's a fun gun. And then the, uh, oh my God, why aren't you running the broadside? I mean, the MX Guardian. The MX Guardian, again, it really only has one good build. And that is, again, Bryson Improved Choke. The HYP LM Barrel, which is the longest. Use the VLK 7 milliwatt laser because this thing weighs five tons and I want to be able to aim in with it because it's not always about hip fire. Sometimes you got to shoot out a little further. The burst fire trigger on simply so we can put in the dragon's breath, get maximum damage out of this gun. Like I said, about a C tier gun, nothing special, nothing to write home about. All right, now we're on LMGs, and with these next two, I have one build for each because they're just not very good. I'll use this on regains when I go in with a throwing knife, so I figured I'd give you the build. If you have a 50-minute version of the RPK, go ahead and use it. And I'll start by saying, if you want an optic, use the 75-round drum. It's not a big deal. I just prefer the 40 because it feels like an AK. For this build, we're going to use the Husher 65 for the same reason we used the Covert V suppressor earlier because it has the same stats. It's the larger caliber. Just like with the cast off 7.62, we're going to use the 406 millimeter barrel. However, it's for the opposite reason on this gun because it's a shorter barrel on this gun. We do get bullet velocity, but we also get aim down sight. We're going to use the broadside FCT to get movement speed, aim down sight, and aim stability. But then going to add the high velocity ammunition in the 40 round mag or the high velocity in the 75 round mag with the optic of your choice. The RPK, again, C tier gun, used to be meta. It'll get the job done there's so many better options you got the 50 minute version have fun with it you need a regain take a throwing knife in kill a bot take one throw some money at it you've got a decent gun that's all i can say about the rp
RPK. And then there's the Sacken that both come from the bundle and finishing the tier 5 mission that has the 15 minute cooldown. Once again, really only one good build for it because it's so dang heavy. And for that, Husher 65 for the same reason we always run it. Ole V Laser because it's so dang heavy we want to be able to pick it up as fast as possible. I use the Corio REX Pro because the iron sights are dog shit. And this is my favorite optic for these types of guns. High velocity so our targets hit where we want. And then the Bruin Q900 grip because again, it's a heavy bitch. We need to get it up. So uh, help me get it up. Yeah. All right. So now that we're done with the dog water guns, let's move forward. And well, I actually lied to you all because there's one more dog water gun on this list. And that is the Carrick 300. Again, C tier, it's usable, but you got to use it like a DMR. Um, so you're going to need the 15 round mag for everything. High velocity is always... I use the FTAC Reaper because it has the recoil, it has the velocity, it's just the, the right choice for this gun. VLK 7 milliwatt laser for the stability and the aim down. This thing is absurdly heavy. Then I use the FTAC Locus SP, or personally, I have the Drexum Prime that is red with a teal heat signature, so I'll use that a lot. If you don't have that from the bundle for what's his name from season two, the Asian guy, if you don't have that, use the FTAC Locus, or you can use the heat source if you'd like. Like, but I prefer to have a smaller zoom for spamming, higher zoom for those precision shots. Like I said, C tier gun, but it is usable. And then there's my personal favorite sniper in the game in the FJX Imperium. This is the only build that you will ever need for this gun. It has absolutely zero sway. You never have to hold your breath. You can quick scope everything. You can hard scope, still not have to hold your breath. Never worry about a thing. Just point and click and it's dead. For that, we're going to use the Nilsound 90. We're going to add the 7 milliwatt laser, the same reasons we always do. Use the Rib 400 to increase that stability even further. CP60 for stability as well as flinch resistance for those sniper fights then throw out high velocity to maximize your velocity you can use explosive in this build you just have to learn the bullet drop i've learned that bullet drop and switched over to explosive and it's it's real fun because people get real confused when they get slapped from 600 meters out by this thing but it takes a lot to learn that it took me about a month and a half keep that in mind this build will never treat you bad however moving over to the next best sniper we've got the mc PR 300 and this is just as good of an option as the Imperium and you'll notice the build is almost identical. It's the Nilsound 90 with the Ole V laser, the FTAC Locus SP or the heat source, the Cronin Lion stock for the stability and then I finish off with the high velocity ammunition. This gun is incredible and I think everyone has it between the Izzy bundle and the Rose bundle. So slap this together, take it to any map, you will fry. It's over building 21, probably wouldn't try sniping there. And then there's the SPX mission, and there's also the 15 minute SPX. The SPX, I'd say is a beer tier, beer tier. It is a B tier weapon, just because it often takes four shots at extremely long ranges to kill, or three between 100 and 250. But if you can hit the headshots reliably, it's a good option. And you'll notice this build is very similar once again. Nilsound 90, Ole V Laser, FTAC Locus SP or Heat Source, the max DMR precision stock to get that stability up, as always, and then the high velocity ammo to make sure the bullets get there on time. This is, like I said, B tier. It's a good sniper, but there's just great snipers in this game. And that is all of the snipers that are in this game that have a 15 minute cooldown. All right, now to wrap this video out with the pistols. I don't know why I would use the majority of these, but I'm gonna run over them anyway. The GS Magna is definitely a meme, but the best way to build it is by using the potato masher because it takes the horizontal recoil out. The OP X9 foregrip because it's just the best option this gun has. I use the Corona Mini Pro because I want to at least line up my first shot before I'm blind. 13 round mag so I have a chance of killing something. And then the wood grain rear grip so I can quick draw it just because, well, if I'm going to use it, it's going to be because it's an emergency. Um, 2 out of 10 would not use. Pretty much same thing can be said for the regular Deagle, however. Potato Masher, FJX Diode 70 so you get the stability, the aim down, the sprint to fire from the laser. We're going to use the competition trigger to get a little more stability, but we're also going to get our fire rate up. We're going to use the wood grain grip, the fast draw it once again, and put the 13 round mag on it because it's the largest we have. The Deagles just are very good in DMZ. They're extremely good in multiplayer, both Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. I just wouldn't use them in DMZ. So they're here. If you want them, use them. I said I was doing every gun, doing every gun. Now for one I'm absolutely going to tell you is a 
very viable weapon. I would put this as an A tier weapon and I would use it. I like to go loud, but you can use the integrally suppressed barrel instead of using the ratchet BE. That's completely up to you. For this build, we're going to use the wedge grip to get our stability. Some other stats, we're going to use the ratchet BE just to make this thing fry. We use the wire stock so we can get around the map faster and the SUR 160 so we can get that ADS and sprint to fire because we're running a 72 round drum, which once again, largest for this gun and it runs through it quick. If you've ever used the Tech 9, you know this. And uh, yeah, that's 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 the FTAC Siege. There's there's only one way to build it. And all right, boys, that is every gun with a 15 minute cooldown. Hope it helps. I hope to see you in Almazra or DMZ in general. I will be streaming quite a bit in the next couple of weeks with DMZ, Grey Zone Warfare, and a few other games. So stop by, check it out, like the video, and subscribe to the so channel. Leave me alone, I'm out. Some fucking streams, yet somehow I feel even more empty. I dressed up as my dad for Halloween, just to tell me that I'm proud of me.